All right, good morning, everyone. And uh, welcome to today's information session on the Water for Growth Agenda and the formation of um, a new plan and direction for the water sector in South Australia, which is quite exciting. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Stephen Morton and I'm the Manager of International Business at the Department for Environment and Water. And in this role, I'm lucky enough to be able to establish global linkages around water um, and, uh, and identify and actively support the South Australian water sector in terms of its growth objectives and future directions. Um, I should mention today that the session is being recorded uh, and will be a link will be provided to you all um, uh, after the event um, and it will be accessible on the AWA YouTube um, site. Um, and the session today is, is one of a number of important collaborations between the Department for Environment and Water and the South Australian branch of the AWA to position the water sector more strongly as a core contributor to the state's future economic development direction and as a central enabler of our prosperity in an emerging post-COVID-19 world. As you will hear today, and as most of you would uh, be well aware, water and the water sector are an essential piece of the future economic puzzle for South Australia. Effectively, all of our collective ambitions for the economy linked to water, whether this be providing greater access um, and improving productivity of use in some of our traditional areas, uh, industry areas such as mining, agriculture, etc., or in related new technology areas that might be linked to space or AI, or even indirectly in terms of ensuring a green urban environment are natural assets uh, for tourism and improved livability. In this context, the concept of water for growth uh, arises uh, out of uh, numerous discussions that have been held over the last 12 months with water sector leaders and beyond, um, led by the South Australian Water Ambassador, the Honourable Carleen Maywell, who you'll hear from in a moment. These discussions have more acutely led to a clear recognition that the water sector is indeed essential for our future prosperity, pr prosperity, but that we also need a joined up and agreed plan for how water can underpin the economy over the next 10 years and beyond. Following the, lease, the release of an initial survey for feedback in early March of 2021, a link and further details will be provided later on in this session. This information session is aimed at providing further detail to participants on the drivers and need for a water and economy plan, potential initial areas for action, and more detail on how you can be involved in setting this exciting new direction. The session has two primary components. Uh, the first is a presentation and overview of water for growth and possible pathways forward by uh, Carleen Maywall, whilst the second is a question and answer session um, which you'll be uh, get to comment and provide any initial um, thoughts and suggestions. And this will be managed through the Q&A box, um, which will be located on your screen. The survey and the feedback from this session will be used to design a future workshop to finalise the key elements of a new plan for the water sector in South Australia. This workshop is intended to be held, uh, is being planned to be held during Oswater 2021 and draw in a broader audience than just water professionals, ensuring that we have a collective direction and response that responds uh, to all water needs across the economy going forward. Just before I move to the formal presentation and the introduction of the South Australian Water Ambassador, I wanted to cover off on uh, one small housekeeping issue, um, that being around um, the questions. As I said, please, uh, as, we, as we work through the presentation and this session, uh, please don't hesitate to put forward any questions, suggestions or comments in the Q&A box. And these will be collated uh, as, we, as we continue this session. Um, we will be responding to those following Carleen's presentation. Um, and we will also uh, ensure that any that we don't cover off in today's session that we respond to um, in due course. And we'll be recording for any comments and questions uh, arising from this session and distributing that, distributing that back to participants um, in due course. So with that introduction, I would now like to turn to the South Australian Water Ambassador for her presentation. Uh, Carleen Maywalt uh, is uh, a, a former South Australian Water Minister, Chair of the um, National Water Reform, uh, National Water Commission, and has recently been reappointed as the, the Water Ambassador for South Australia through the Department for Environment and Water. 
And as part of um, her role, uh, Carleen has a, has a critical function to support collaboration, engagement and, uh, and collective action around water in South Australia. So with that very brief introduction on Carleen, I'd now like to turn to Carleen for her introduction and overview of the Water for Growth concept and agenda. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Steve, and uh, welcome to you all. And thank you for joining us uh, for this webinar. As uh, part of our processes, we we look to engage with the water sector more um, closely and with the broader water user sector uh, to to build a plan for South Australia to ensure that we can meet the water requirements of the future. It, it's a critical element of our state's um, growth, and I'm really pleased to be able to be partnering with the AWA to enable us to to engage more broadly with the water sector and other sectors to ensure that we can be well informed and that we can develop a plan that is industry led and a plan that can be uh, one that will stand us in good stead to meet our growth targets. I'm just going to share my screen with you now so that uh, I can run through a presentation um, that just gives you a little bit of background around um, water for growth and uh, the initiative that has been developing over some time. Now, this is not a plan that has been, has been uh, fully um, developed as yet. It's the start of a process. It's the result of a number of consultations that uh, the Department of Environment and Water and myself and the AWA have been undertaking for um, uh, some months now. And we've collated this, this presentation to give you a feel for, for the kind of feedback we're getting and the kind of things that people feel are important for us to consider when developing a plan for the state. So Water for Growth is an initiative that we believe will support the great the state's growth agenda. The South Australian government has a strong focus on growth uh, and they have an initiative that is known as the, uh, the state growth agenda. Uh, and to support the state growth agenda, I think it's really important to put some context around where water fits into that. Um, I really like this saying, this is from Ban Ki-moon, who is the, the, was the eighth um, Secretary General of the United Nations. And he says that saving our planet, lifting people out of poverty, advancing economic growth, these are one and the same fight. And we must connect the dots between climate change, water security, energy shortages, global health, food security, and women's empowerment. These, uh, these are really critical because the solutions to one problem must be solutions to them all. And that's the premise by which we're putting forward that water is a key enabler of our growth, our growth state, but also our um, well-being as a society. Under the growth state agenda, the state government is developing a number of strategies under nine different sectors. And in those sectors, there are some key sectors that are dependent upon water that, uh, to achieve their growth targets. Um, the sectors that uh, I think are most relevant to, to what we're talking about today is water for food, wine, and agriculture. The strategy itself is looking to in, in achieve a target of uh, $23 billion from the current great, uh, growth state um, uh, revenue of 15.2 billion by 2030. If you extrapolate for the existing amount of water that's used for our 15.2 giga, um, 15.2 billion uh, dollars worth of um, revenue to 23 billion we're going to be needing around another over 400 gigalitres of water to supply that growth if we take an approach as business as usual that is not going to be achievable through a market mechanism and there will be a need for interventions for the discovery and development of additional water resources and for the um, development of new technologies to make our, our water using uh, industries more efficient. Water for mining, we're looking at uh, increasing ex exploration by th around $300 million and we're looking to grow the mining sector significantly in this state. Um, and the estimates of how much water might be needed for that are around 100 gigalitres. If you look at energy and you've seen that uh, recently um, there's been release of uh, hydrogen policies and, and uh, um, energy uh, expansion in the hydrogen area, which will require access to water also. And what those numbers are um, will, be, will be competing with the requirements of um, food, wine and agriculture and water for mining. We also need to consider what sort of manufacturing future we might have in this state in a post-COVID world. 
how are we going to manage the environment to ensure that uh, the, uh, the water that we're taking for productive uses can ensure sustainability for our environment and enhance our tourism opportunities and not impact upon the value and the quality of water from, a, from a, an environment perspective. We're also looking at our cities and um, you know, the, the, the greening of cities, the um, livability of cities and the, the research that's being undertaken that says we really do need to be better at managing water in our cities to enable us to have um, a healthy society. And then there's the others, the unknowns. What's the water for the future? What's the water and where does it interconnect with space? Where does it interconnect with defence? Where does it interconnect with those other sectors that are moving forward at this point in time? So we've got a big task ahead of us. And the current situation is that um, that uh, water is both a current and future global economic challenge as well. So not just our local growth is challenged by um, water for the future. Globally, there is a big um, job and task ahead in regard to supplying the world's water need. So over 2 billion people all, are already living in regions that are experiencing high water stress and over 700 million people worldwide are likely to be displaced by intense water scarcity by 2030. That's just over the horizon and nine years, less than a decade away. And I believe that one of the greatest risks to Australian sovereignty is the, dis is the displacement of people because of water scarcity. 80% of future climate change adaptation responses will be in the water related area. So business as usual for our current productive capacity is going to be impacted by the um, climate change and the impact of um, severe weather um, and extreme events. Three out of four jobs worldwide are reliant on the availability of water and future water security. And water-related financial losses reached 36 billion in 2018, according to the WHO. So global water industry growth is currently at 14% each year. So if we get water right in our own backyard, we can take our knowledge, our technology, our know-how, and we can play, play a very strong part in, in, um, in, in helping the global world to understand how they can do water better. So it's not just about what we can do here in, in South Australia, it's what we can do if we're doing water well here in South Australia and play our part on the global stage. So South Australia's future water solutions will leverage new exports and investment, we believe. If we create a, a hub, if we create an environment where water is considered to be one of our main enablers of, in, of not only our economy, but on our well-being of our community, we will have something that we can leverage internationally. So the new direction for the sector, we believe that it's critically important that we look at the key elements that water will provide for us to support our growth state ad, um, agenda. And one of the elements is growing the South Australian economy through water. Water is one of the major inhibitors. The last thing we want to be doing is, is saying to these sectors that have got these high um, expectations in growth um, for the next decade and beyond, that we can't supply them the water and that the Department of Environment and those that are managing water are putting the foot on the hose. We need to be engaged up front in this, these conversations. We need to be engaged up front in the planning for these new developments that are going to bring growth to our state, because we do not want to see water as an inhibitor growth, but to, to see water well managed as a part of enabling growth to occur. We can also leverage the South Australian water ecosystem. We can better coordinate and collaborate the knowledge that we have in this state through our researchers, through our innovation within industry, through our learnings, through our education and uh, through our government policy positions. How do we work on ensuring that we've got the right policy settings to enable uh, the right water solutions to be delivered. And then we can also look at engaging on international water challenges. What are the challenges internationally and where can we play our part? And innovation will be the core driver of the sector's future growth and impact on the state economy. And innovation is best delivered when people are collaborating and the best minds from across industries are participating in the conversations that are necessary to deliver those solutions. And it re will require not only a multidisciplinary approach, but also a transdisciplinary approach. People will need to think differently 
And we cannot just rely on an engineering solution or a policy solution. They need to interconnect and they need to be brought to the table from a range of different perspectives. And that is industry leading the way, what do we need? And then doing the relevant research and with the government support to enable us to, to achieve what we need to achieve. The other thing that comes with all of that is ensuring that we've got the right skill base and the right people and the right education for um, developing the skills that we'll need in the future for the water sector. So in 2020, what we've been doing um, as far as industry, industry engagement, we've been having one-on-one -on -one discussions with water and non-water industry leaders, researchers, educators, and government agencies. Water sector is very good at talking to itself. We know what we do and we know how well we do it. But what we need to get much, much better at is talking to other sectors and those sectors who are dependent upon our water to have those conversations that we need to upfront with these sectors to enable us to be engaged in delivering water solutions. The initial analysis of water issues and opportunities across growth state industries is something else that we've been working on so that we can demonstrate to government and the broader sectors that the need to understand water better and how water fits into their growth state um, targets uh, so that we can actually have a more coordinated uh, approach. And we're not, we're not facing in the future a siloed approach um, from a government perspective or an industry perspective around water. So what do we need to do um, next? And what have we heard so far? We've heard that new mechanisms for the water sector collaboration for business growth is needed, that there needs to be a way to facilitate these conversations and these and they have an active part in actually driving the initiative that enables those conversations to be had. We need industry to industry engagement and partnerships are essential. So we need the mining sector to be better engaged with the water sector. We need the food, wine and ag sectors to be better engaged so that we can bring the brightest minds, the greatest innovations to the table when we're considering solutions for the future. We need to be able to provide for industry pathways to commercialization of new innovation, which requires us to have platforms for risk-free innovation and testing critical technologies to enable the innovation to find its way to market. We need to develop skills of the workforce to ensure that we have the people that we will need to build this industry for the future. And there's a collective need for improved industry promotion so that we talk about the water sector more as an important enabler for our well-being as a society, but also for our, our productive growth. We need government to be in partnership in the international marketplace is, is because that is even more important in a post-COVID-19 world. And it is, it is no secret that most countries have a similar situation where uh, uh, Australia is, is a government-led uh, water distributor-based um, um, economy where most of the, um, uh, the government assets that supply water are um, either um, facilitated by government or owned by government and heavily regulated by government. So therefore, we need to be engaging with governments because it's no different around the world and government to government relationships are critically important in um, developing international markets. So in 2021, our next steps are that Ju has partnered with the AWA. So thank you very much to the AWA. We have a survey out at the moment and we would encourage you to go to the AWA website or to click on the link if you've been sent a link to the survey and actively participate in that survey. That will provide us information to support the position that we're putting to the government to assist us with getting the, the critical support we need across government from multiple agencies to enable this plan to be a holistic approach to water from a government perspective. And it needs to be demonstrated to government that this is an industry-led approach. It's not government doing this for the sake of government. It's not a government show and tell. It's an industry show and tell. What do we need and how are we going to engage with the water sector to deliver it? We're going to have a ministerial water industry roundtable. So Minister Spears is very keen to engage first hand himself with the industry. So we'll be looking at having a leader's roundtable with the minister down the track. And this uh, webinar, uh, but also the um, survey will inform that, uh, that roundtable. And we'll also be having targeted discussions with external stakeholders, with the mining sector, 
with the food, wine and egg sector, with the space sector, with the hydrogen and energy sectors, so that we can be confident that we know what their needs are or understand uh, their needs so that we can bring them to the table to help us to develop this plan. So the key areas that we need to action is uh, to look at an industry-led model for a new, innovative and productive enhancing water infrastructure. A joint government and private investment strategy for water R&D. We need a structured approach to te technology acceleration. And we're looking to set up a brokerage model for technology and solution adoption across key industries. Having a joined up focus on skills and education is critical. We're considering a water center for innovation and business connection and where that might um, be best placed and how that would be developed. We're considering that a water brand for South Australia, a better brand, branding that tells people we're here and we're the gateway to the Australian expertise on water, we believe is something that will be crucial to ensuring that, that South Australian businesses can position themselves well. And we need a new organising structure for water sector expansion and growth that engages with water users and with multiple government agencies to actually deal with the complex policy area, but also the, um, the introduction of new and innovative technologies into this space. So that's what we're hearing. That's what, we've, what the industry is telling us. And we'd like to hear from you so that we can understand what it is that you need and what you think the industry needs and how we might pull that together. So I'd encourage you to fill out the survey form. There it is, it's up on your screen at the moment. So take note of that. Um, that uh, web address and go and fill out the survey so that information can feed into the process. And we need you to look out for future Water for Growth workshop at the Oswater coming up in May. And I'll give Oswater a really big plug now. I'm certainly hoping that um, those of you who are online today are already planning to be at Oswater and we'll look forward to seeing you there. So we're seeking feedback and direction on how can the water sector better link with and underpin growth in other industries. How can the water sector better leverage global markets? And what needs to be done to drive the water sector of the future? And where is most effort required right now? So what are the actions we need to be doing right now that can inform us as we develop this, this longer term plan? So that's our Water for Growth initiative. Uh, we're, we're really keen to be engaging with you very, very deeply to understand your needs and to inform us on how this, this initiative can be developed into a plan that will stand us in good stead to meet our water needs of the future. And thank you for attending today. Thank you very much, Carleen, for that, uh, that overview and that presentation. Um, if I can get you just to go back uh, one slide around the questions, um, certainly encourage those that are online to, um, to put forward any questions or, or comments around that. Obviously, there'll be other avenues for uh, feedback as well, including the survey. And certainly, uh, Carleen and I would welcome anyone online today getting in contact with us to have a more detailed discussion around this, this, this initiative and how it can be taken forward. Just to reflect on Carleen's um, uh, overview, um, you know, water is essential for the future ec uh, economic uh, direction and prosperity of South Australia. And regardless of, um, of whether or not we have an active uh, approach or not, um, you know, there will be a whole range of challenges that we will face um, in the future that, that need to be uh, actively tackled. Um, the water sector has a critical role to play in providing the capacity and capability for us to respond, not just to emergency situations, but to respond in a strategic and direct way uh, to underpin the future economy of the state um, and it's really essential um, in, in the current environment as we map out a forward pathway uh, for growth that the water sector plays a role and is actively engaged in setting that future plan and being involved in, um, um, in, in directing a future and prosperous South Australia. So we would certainly encourage you to, to actively involve yourself in this discussion, um, to actively uh, put forward your ideas and we will be looking to consolidate um, uh, the feedback with you over the coming months towards the middle of the year uh, to have a, an agreed direction that we can start to progress in an implementation sense. So thank you very much for your participation today. There is one question that has um, 
that has come up um, from uh, John Radcliffe, which I'll answer, um, or actually I'll, I'll direct to, to Carleen uh, in the first instance. So, um, um, so John Radcliffe has asked, what is the relationship between the SA Water Plan uh, program and the objectives and pursuits of the National Water Grid Authority? Carleen, if you have any uh, initial comments on that, I would like to uh, hear from you. Yep, thanks very much, um, Steve, and, and thanks, John. It's a very, very good question. Um, one of the initiatives as part of um, the work that we've been doing with the Water for Growth um, program is to actually consider what are the opportunities for leveraging um, from the state government to support um, infrastructure in South Australia. And the National Water Grid Authority is one of the authorities that does have um, a um, uh, a considerable amount of resources uh, for um, developing water infrastructure. Um, what the Water for Growth strategy would like to do um, is to be able to coordinate across industries to ensure that we have the best possible applications to those particular um, um, programs that are focused on water infrastructure and uh, um, the water for the future at the national level currently, including the National Water Grid Authority and the Murray-Darling Basin um, water that's available under the Basin Plan, sorry, money that's available under the Basin Plan, uh, plus also some drought resilience funding and various other Commonwealth um, funding programs. There's around about $5 billion available. And we would like to see our initiative leverage that money into some of that money into South Australia and a greater proportion of that money into South Australia. So we see the South Australian Water Plan being the coordinating and the facilitating um, uh, playing the facilitating role to bring the parties together to make sure the applications that we put forward to through the National Water Grid Authority and other federal um, programs um, are the best that they can be and have the greatest opportunity for success in delivering on projects here in South Australia. So the, the National Water Grid Authority and the other programs need to be keenly linked to the, uh, the Water for Growth initiative. And one of the targets of the plan could be, for example, to leverage one billion of that $5 billion into South Australia to support our um, water growth needs in the future. Uh, thank you, Carleen. Uh, we have another question as well from Rob Richardson. Um, so Rob is asking, uh, what are the avenues for SMEs with innovative products to access the appropriate government department. A very interesting um, and timely question. Carleen, if I can direct that to you again, please. Thanks, Rob. And it's a really important question. As I mentioned through my presentation, pathways to market for innovation, innovative products is, is a challenge, um, particularly for, for small um, enterprises. Uh, and there's a lot of innovation out there in, in our industry. Uh, and how we connect that into pathways to for um, the uptake of that in those innovative products within our, our localised um, water utilities uh, and um, broadly on a more national and then international marketplace is a real challenge at the moment and knowing which door to go through is a challenge. We would like to see this Water for Growth initiative address that in some way, shape or form. And we think it's a really important part of, of, um, of, of the of the process we need to undertake to make our industry successful here. So we've been talking um, broadly with industry who are saying, should we have demonstration sites? Can we have um, pilot um, um, programs that can be supported and uh, through financially, but also with ability to be able to, to access infrastructure that enables a demonstration of, of, of technology to be undertaken that can then be used as a, as a selling tool for the, um, for the um, particular SME. So I think there's a big role in this growth um, agenda for us to be able to develop in partnership with the players in, in local government and also with SA Water, an ability for us to have demonstration sites, pilot um, um, projects and um, support for that delivery of innovation to market uh, and particularly from the SMEs. So it's, it's not there yet, but it needs to be in the plan. We need to be actually demonstrating through the Water for Growth initiative that this is an important part of what needs to be developed here in South Australia. 
So um, put it in your survey and make sure uh, as many of you who are concerned about this question as possible can actually reference this as part of your feedback to us so we can make sure that, that uh, government understands the importance of this to industry and the importance for our growth agenda. Thanks, Carleen. Um, as a more general point, just on that, that question and, and discussion as well, is that um, um, we need to look at opportunities for productivity improvement across in, of key industries. If we're going to increase competitiveness, if we're going to increase export penetration, and we're going to attract the necessary investment from the private sector and the public sector going forward um, in water-related activity, it's really critical that we drive innovation which, which links directly to productivity. So providing pathways for SMEs um, and new product and new technologies to be accelerated um, and applied across critical industries is, is really important. We can't just keep supplying more and more water um, uh, that is um, going to be uneconomic over the medium term. So productivity has to be uh, an important part of the equation. So pathways forward in that, in that sense um, are really critical and we're really keen to hear from the water sector um, in regard to that, that particular matter. Um, another question uh, comes from Simon Sheriff. Um, good to see you online, Simon. Um, Simon's question is that uh, given local government's uh, key role in achieving water sensitive cities, how is this initiative engaging local government especially to ensure international delegations appropriately um, represent the on-ground realities of making this happen. A very uh, good and multifaceted question there. Um, Carleen, if I could pass to you on that one. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Simon. Um, local government have a really important role to play in this, this initiative and uh, the, uh, the water sensitive cities, livability, water for society, water to, for our wellbeing, is critically important uh, and we need to be thinking about how we how we develop new opportunities for alternative sources of water to support um, local government in providing for their communities. Uh, and it, it's there's two parts to this question. One is how does how we're we going to engage with local government. Well, I believe we're going to engage with local government deeply. And I think that uh, anyone from local government who is on the line, I would encourage you to actually put your perspective forward, forward in the survey from AWA. Uh, because local government has a key role to play, not only in, in water for water sensitive cities, but also for wastewater. And in some instance, in, in instances around Australia for drinking water also, but also in supporting key economic opportunities within their local government regions. So they're, they're going to be a key player and will need to be get deeply engaged in the development of this strategy. On the other part of the question, which is around um, international delegations, uh, one of the things that we um, have seen in the past is a very ad hoc approach to international delegations that seem to come in a range of different doors. Some go directly to local governments through local governments, um, uh, sister city relationships with other countries. Um, some come through our research and our, our university institutions. Some come directly to our utilities. Some come in through government. This strategy, we believe, if we have a framework around it, uh, and we build a, a structure that's more collaborative with, around it that will have a better um, ability to be able to manage international delegations appropriately and uh, bring them in to represent uh, so that they can um, be matched with the knowledge and the expertise and the um, demonstration sites of what we're doing here in South Australia more appropriately. So I think the Water for Growth strategy will have a really important role to play in coordinating and facilitating a more meaningful um, um, experience for those international delegations through local governments, through universities, through um, state government um, approaches. And, uh, and I think that that's a really important part of making sure that they, they do get to see what they need to see. So local government, um, I encourage anyone that's online to get on to our survey and put your perspective forward because I think, um, um, as we all know, local government's a key important part to this as well. Great, thanks, Carleen. And um, just as a, an extension of that uh, around the international space, um, as Carleen noted in the presentation, uh, the water, um, Industry is one of the fastest growing industry sectors globally at the moment, um, primarily driven in response to the various water challenges that, that are in place and continuing to emerge globally. And on average, um, uh, South Australia in historically pre-COVID-19 in particular, 
um, uh, you know, received a delegation, an industry or government delegation from somewhere in the world on average once every five weeks. Um, and I don't think um, as a state and as an industry that we've tapped into that effectively. Um, and I think that's a significant opportunity and something that we would certainly love uh, industry's feedback on how we could do that better and how we can leverage that opportunity uh, more effectively. Moving on to another question. Um, um, uh, Guangan Jia, apologies if I've, um, if I've got the pronunciation uh, there wrong, um, has uh, asked a question if there's anything related to, to wastewater and stormwater. Um, before I, I turn to Carleen, um, I might just say that uh, one of the concepts that we're looking at um, and one of the opportunities that we're looking at through this process is how South Australia can drive a, a reimagining of the water cycle in some sense. Um, how can we um, drive productivity across every aspect of water, including in the, in the wastewater and stormwater space? So absolutely think that wastewater and stormwater are a critical part of the, of, of the story. Um, in terms of a, a direct um, additional water source for, for different economic uses, but also um, the critical role they play in some indirect areas that, that, that intrinsically link back to the economy like livability, et cetera. So I might just pass on to Carleen um, after that uh, brief um, uh, segue um, for any further um, responses to that question. Thank you. And thanks, Jan Guangjian Jio. It's a very good question. And wastewater and stormwater is a key part of um, the future, how we can better access um, alternative water resources is a critical part of being able to meet the future needs um, for our um, growth state agenda, but also for our well-being of our, our um, cities and our communities. The, the important thing here is, is um, to, to remember that um, that if we're going to be able to achieve the the um, the targets that have been set by the state government for growth is is we're going to have to be really innovative in in how we access different types of water and bring new water into the equation because the environment is at the point in at the point where it, it is at breaking point and it is not just a matter of going into the market anymore and and purchasing water it's not uh, because there is just simply not enough to go around for what we've got currently. And if you couple that with, with um, the climate change projections, we, we are going to struggle to meet the existing needs that will land the growth targets unless we do some innovative thinking and some innovative work to ensure that we can maximise the water resource opportunities that are out there. That includes wastewater reuse, stormwater reuse, um, managed aquifer recharge, more innovative ways to connect water into the systems. Um, it includes um, groundwater reserves, um, different types of technology and desalinating brine and a, range of, a whole range of technologies that need to be um, considered and on the table to enable us to meet those growth targets and also the livability targets. Um, so yes, wastewater and stormwater are definitely um, two elements of this plan that will need to be considered. Great, thank you, Carlene. Um, the next question comes from Bob Newman, um, uh, another uh, important piece of the puzzle. Um, so his question is how to advance community and industry water literacy. Bob, this is a fantastic um, question again, um, and it's it's because because there is so much complexity in the in the water um, sector um, and it's it's not as simple as just turn on the tap <laughs> and unfortunately the water sector has been doing a fabulous job for for many 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 decades and people's expectations of water is it's always going to be there uh, and yet we in the water sector know that 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 uh, that is a is is not the case particularly facing um, a water scarce future in the, uh, the face of um, climate change. So water literacy is a critical component of this uh, and we need to be engaging with um, the education sector uh, and we also need to be in, engaging better with our communities uh, and communities engaging with each other to understand the issues upstream, downstream and um, in, in regard to different water resource areas. Um, Water literacy was identified by the McKelty report as a critical element um, for continuing reform in the water sector uh, on the national agenda. 
um, because he's reporting to the water sharing arrangements between the states in the Murray-Darling Basin clearly identified that people just didn't understand what was happening in the water and they didn't understand the complexity of the market, they didn't understand the complexity of the different water allocation processes and they didn't understand the difference in the, in the water licensing. And the reason why they don't understand is it's really, really complicated. So water literacy is a very big part of this and how we engage in um, developing greater water literacy with, amongst our industries and also within our community is critically important for success in the future. So part of Water for Growth is about education, part of Water for Growth is about research, part of Water for Growth is water supplies. Um, the education and water literacy is a big component of that. Oops, thanks, Carlene, and also a critical uh, support mechanism to ensure that the water sector is engaging strategically with other industries on an ongoing basis. Um, the next question um, uh, comes from Jeff Connor. Um, and Jeff asks, how will planning for climate change be developed to give the public and industry a better basis to plan for this key risk around water? Any thoughts on that one, Carlene? The million dollar question, Jeff. Um, Climate change is, is something that um, uh, many, many agencies of government are starting to grapple with at the moment, including the Murray-Darling Basin Authority, including uh, the Commonwealth Environmental Water Holder, including state governments. Um, we see at the moment, though, and a lot of the work that's being undertaken is a disconnect between the work that's happening in climate change and the water sector. And we need to better engage the water sector in the conversations around climate change. You recall in my presentation earlier, I talked about um, uh, the, the work that's been done internationally that is, has um, estimated that about 80% of climate change impacts will be felt in the water sector. So dealing with climate change in the water sector is, is um, it's a no brainer, but it doesn't seem to be happening at the moment in the way in which um, I think is going to set us up well to be able to meet the challenges of the future and to be able to be adaptive and create now in an innovative way, the tools that our industry is gonna need in the future over the horizon to meet the challenges of climate change. So water for growth is again, going to need to have a key focus on what are the challenges for our water supply? What are our challenges to growth? What are our challenges to meeting the needs of industries who use water and society that uses water and climate change has to be a big part of that. And I think in the survey, if you can get online and get involved in um, participating in the survey and putting on, on um, our agenda very firmly that climate change needs to be considered and the impacts that you think climate change are likely to have on your business and uh, in the, the customers that you are dealing with will be really important to us to sell this message to government. Great, thanks Carlene for that response. And uh, again, just as an extension, uh, the likes of uh, Ross Garneau, et cetera, um, have highlighted that South Australia in particular is really well positioned to capture um, economic uh, opportunities out of, out of climate change. Um, obviously there's been a heavy focus in the narrative um, of the, the government and others um, in that context uh, around energy, but water is an essential part of that. So we really need to look at how do we translate the future challenges around climate change into opportunity um, and how do we position ourselves most effectively in responding to, to those uh, future issues going forward. Um, the next um, question comes from, from John Gransbury, um, um, who asks, um, a new plan for SA's water must build on the existing plan. Will there be moves towards greater transparency of water asset performance so everyone can contribute to water grid ideas? Question mark. Um, and then uh, an additional point, the BOM used to do a report that was useful in this regard. Um, Carlene, um, any thoughts on that question? Yes, um, thanks, John. It's a very good question. Um, that any plan must build on previous plans. There's absolutely no point in reinventing the wheel every time. Uh, but South Australia hasn't had a pro an approach to a holistic um, government and industry combined effort in planning for the future in water for a very long time. The uh, state water plan of the 90s was um, the one that I um, recall uh, in my early days, uh, and we built on that when we developed Water for Good in 2009. But since 2009, there has been 
you know, work um, that's undertaken in regards to developing the basin plan in the Murray-Darling Basin. But what about our other water resources? What about our groundwater? What about our other um, systems that we have in South Australia and access to those? So, so we really do need to build on um, what we've already done in the past and we actually need to regroup and go, well, what did we achieve under Water for Good? And what's next? And Water for Growth is the initiative we're putting forward um, to, to build on what's existing and, and to create the pathway into the future for more sustainable water. Um, will there be greater transparency of water asset performance? Um, I guess you're asking the question there in regard to um, water utilities. Um, the water utilities are already um, subject to significant um, regulatory processes that require them to, to undertake transparent processes for economic um, um, regulation and the like. Um, however, we think through a water for growth strategy and a, and a greater collaboration and a more um, joined up approach with our water utilities, our local governments um, who own assets in this area as well, we can, we can develop a greater understanding of their needs and a greater understanding of what's out there through our test bed demonstration site um, initiative. Um, if that were to be um, pursued, it would give us an opportunity to have greater transparency on how we can deliver better asset performance through new and innovative technology, providing that pathway to market for new and innovative ideas. But there's also the opportunity, um, John, I think for us to look at um, you know, where, where the water resources are, the untapped water resources that we could be accessing right now. And that would be things like um, you know, enhancing our access to, um, to wastewater and, um, and treating it uh, to a fit for purpose level for other purposes to meet our growth state agendas. And I think they're critically important um, elements of this plan. Um, and, and talking about um, the, the projects that um, the BOM used to do in a report that was useful in this regard, um, I think you're talking about the comparative report in re that used to be done by the National Water Commission actually and was transferred over to BOM. I'm not um, aware of what they're doing at the moment and uh, what emphasis they're putting on um, asset um, performance reporting, um, but we'll, we'll take that one on notice and we'll get back to you, John. Thanks, Carleen, for that. Um, and I think uh, some of the diversity of questions here highlight, um, you know, how, how many links there are between water and the economy and where, um, you know, th th there are a range of levers. And I think um, uh, we need to work through those and we certainly need um, further intelligence and suggestion from across the water sector and related industries about where the key leverage points are going forward so that we can prioritise effort and really drive um, uh, an impact in the short term. Um, two questions um, uh, remaining currently. Um, happy for any further ones. Um, uh, the next one comes from Garang Parekh. Um, and Garang asks, um, can we relate the new home buyer grant with rainwater harvesting? I mean, every recipient of new home buyer of the new home buyers grant should install rainwater harvesting systems. Can we suggest that simple suggestion to policymakers and government administrators? Again, I think um, you know, reflecting on my previous point, um, you know, there are a range of, of leverage points that, that are available in terms of policy or investment, et cetera, that can support um, uh, uh, you know, a real and economic change in this space. Uh, um, and I think um, this is another one, but I think really importantly, we need, um, we need the water sector to, to be really active in identifying where these opportunities are. Um, and we need to, I think, particularly in the short term, um, as we work towards somewhat re-establishing the water sector and positioning the water sector as this critical enabler of the economy going forward, that we, we focus our efforts on those that are going to have most impact and then um, start to build on that over time. But um, on that question uh, around um, uh, the Home Buyers Grant and leveraging uh, uh, existing opportunities and mechanisms, Carleen, do you have anything further to add? Well, I think it all needs to be in the mix, doesn't it? And I think as part of um, the Water for Growth initiative, if we were to, to develop through that plan, um, a, um, an ability to be able to have the conversations about the right policy settings for the future, then rainwater harvesting, new home buyers, linking to new home buyer grants, linking to um, planning regulation that ensures that when we're developing new suburbs and we're developing 
the housing of the future, we're thinking about the water of the future at the same time. And the only way to do that is to actually ensure that you've got the right policy settings in place. Um, I'm not convinced we have the right policy settings in place at the moment, but I don't know that we have the right mechanisms for those conversations and broader industry and community to be, to be talking about how we need to bring our policy settings up to speed with community expectations. And uh, um, I think Water for Growth has a key role to play in actually ensuring that those conversations around the policy settings of the future are had. And that would include how we deal with the rainwater harvesting in homes, how we, how we deal with, um, uh, with the, the, um, the water for the future in new development, whether it be um, new suburbs, infill within the city and the like. Um, there's a big question there where, where water and planning um, policies are not necessarily as well linked as they should be. So this is another conversation that we need your feedback on coming in through the survey so that we can put these issues on the table for government from the industry's perspective, not just from our perspective, working with government, but from the industry's perspective that these are really important matters. We need the right policy settings to enable innovation and to enable um, the water requirements of the future for, you know, for well-being of our society. So very good question. Um, and lastly, um, uh, a question from uh, Matawa Rapasing, um, uh, who asked how the new planning regulation could support dual reticulation schemes in regional South Australia, where sewer and recycled water provided um, are provided by local government. Again, a really um, an important question in, in the broad scope and tapestry of, of water um, and the economy going forward. Carlene, any thoughts on, on regional and distributed systems at all? Oh, absolutely, um, Stephen. Thank you for the, the question, Madawa. It is, it is um, one of the, the areas um, that's often forgotten is the, the um, ability to be able to, um, to look at more, more um, distributed systems that can support local communities. And we really need to be engaging better in a conversation with local government and others. South Australia has done some really good work in this space, uh, and but there is a much, much greater need more broadly across the state and nationally and internationally for work in this area, because the future will be about how we can localise um, our, our infrastructure, how we can localise our, um, our reuse and our maximisation of the water um, source availability locally. Uh, rather than importing water for our communities. And I think it's a very, very important um, need is to be able to link those planning regulations um, with the thinking about water upfront rather than at the end of the process. And, and I've seen too often, as many of us have in this room, that uh, you know, development goes ahead, it gets all of the tick boxes, and at the end they come asking for the water instead of actually building into the planning process up front what's needed for water. So again, I encourage you to put forward your ideas in this regard through the survey, so we can ensure that government understands that this is industry saying these things, and it is industry that's calling for a more coordinated approach. It's industry that that needs to see um, the planning and regulatory and policy settings are necessary to enable them to, to deliver the innovation and, the, and uh, the technology of the future so for us to be able to manage water better, to manage water in the face of climate change, to manage water in the face of growth. Um, and, and they were all linked together. You can't separate one or the other and you can't be successful unless you're addressing all of those. Great, thank you, Carlene. So that brings us to the end of, of the, the Q&A session. Um, and uh, given that uh, we are uh, pretty much out of time, um, I'll, um, I'll wrap up. Um, I wanna thank you for those who have um, uh, participated. Um, um, and uh, there is one final question that has come up um, uh, around the potential role of landscape boards. And again, we would certainly be keen to, um, to engage with landscape boards um, as part of this process. So as I mentioned, um, uh, if you're interested in making contact for a more detailed discussion, please do so. Um, we will look to distribute the slides presented today um, uh, to participants. Um, and obviously the, um, the recording will be available on the AWA website. So we would, uh, we would certainly appreciate those that have participated today 
socialising this concept and starting to uh, bring in a broader range of players into the discussion. It's really critical that the water sector and its connections with other industries is, is further developed and that we get um, greater direction and buy-in and support uh, from um, uh, outside government in, in, in taking forward and designing this agenda. Um, and I really appreciate your participation online today. I uh, really want to also thank the Australian Water Association at the national and state level for their support um, in providing this event, uh, event today, but also in the broader process. It's great to see the, the association um, uh, providing that direct link to, to industry. And we, uh, we are certainly keen to continue um, to, to leverage that going forward. Uh, lastly, I want to thank Carleen for her presentation um, and her leadership of this agenda so far and, and into the future. Um, um, uh, really looking forward to seeing what the, the next couple of months uh, draw out um, and certainly looking forward to working with you all and the extended water family and those with an interest in water in, in setting um, what um, I guess could be described as a, as a once in a lifetime opportunity to, to set a, a direction for water that in, in a post COVID world. Um, so thank you all again for your participation. Uh, I hope you all enjoy your Easter break. Please travel safe and, and looking forward to uh, the future discussions um, and debates um, and, uh, and directions that we uh, see fall out of this process going forward. So thank you very much. Thanks everyone. Thank you for your participation. I really appreciate you joining us in your busy schedules and we look forward to engaging with you further to make Water for Growth a reality. Thank you.